On December 20, a major power outage occurred in San Francisco, primarily caused by a fire at the Pacific Gas and Electric Company substation, located at 8th Street and Mission Street. Initially, small-scale outages began in western areas such as Inner Sunset. After the fire, the company proactively cut power to additional equipment to ensure firefighter safety, resulting in peak outages affecting about 130,000 customers, roughly 30% of the city's customers. Numerous traffic signals failed, causing congestion and chaos. Vehicles from the autonomous taxi company Waymo stalled at intersections because they could not detect the signals, leading to blockages, after which the company paused service across the city. In fact, as of the 22nd, some users still had not regained power, exposing severe aging issues in San Francisco's infrastructure, infrastructure in major U.S. cities, lagging behind the times is no longer news. Wildfires in Los Angeles persisted for a long time without being extinguished, destroying many homes and even causing some insurers to exit California. The New York subway has been exposed by numerous video bloggers for filthy conditions with rats running rampant. Honestly, in China, I have not experienced a power outage in 20 years. Even for occasional equipment maintenance, advance notice is given, typically lasting only about two hours, with quick restoration. During this fire incident, Musk prominently touted Tesla's vision-based intelligent driving system as unaffected, performing much better than Google's. This also sparked discussions about whether U.S. infrastructure can truly support competing with China in an AI war. I believe Waymo and Tesla each have strengths and weaknesses in their technical approaches. Pure vision and laser radar combined with infrastructure each have pros and cons. The market should decide the winner. A nation cannot build infrastructure treating disasters as routine, or social efficiency will drop sharply. Disaster redundancy is the government's responsibility. Companies need to trust the infrastructure and services provided by the government. If this chain of trust is unreliable, developing a modern technological society will face catastrophic consequences. Currently, US AI technology can be said to be just starting. China and the US apply AI the most. Major Chinese cities have widely launched intelligent driving and robo-taxi services. Even remote border areas like Tibet already use unmanned logistics vehicles. These companies lack the ability to ensure equipment operation under unreliable infrastructure, such as insufficient 5G signal strength and stability or issues with the Beidou satellite navigation system. Then unmanned logistics vehicles in Tibet could not operate. Such infrastructure and services must be provided by the government or state-owned enterprises, not primarily for profit, but to advance overall societal productivity. The U.S. now relies on advantages in advanced chip processes, far exceeding China in chip computing power. However, companies like Huawei use advanced packaging and better optical interconnect technology to build larger-scale computing clusters, placing Chinese data centers at the same level as the U.S. in absolute computing power. Such solutions consume more electricity. Companies cannot afford high energy costs, requiring government subsidies on electricity prices. China's electricity generation is twice that of the U.S. Ongoing power plants and energy storage facilities far exceed the U.S., so China's electricity advantage will grow. Regions like Guizhou and Tibet have abundant hydropower resources. Guizhou has taken the lead in building numerous cloud computing centers, providing cheap electricity to companies like Apple, Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, and Huawei. The hydropower station under construction in Tibet will greatly exceed the record for the largest hydropower station held by the Three Gorges Dam, offering several times more cheap electricity resources to support massive AI computing demands. China's nuclear power technology has reached the world's most advanced level. Not only have small modular reactors achieved commercial use, but more importantly, the thorium-based molten salt reactor has successfully operated experimentally in inland regions like Gansu, supplying power to the grid. This means nuclear plants no longer rely heavily on water resources. China's vast western regions can gain cheap, stable electricity, leveraging abundant thorium reserves to undertake industrial transfers from coastal areas. Even in controlled fusion power generation technology, China is at the forefront. In recent years, Grand U.S. plans often remain on PowerPoint slides. For funding, tech heroes like Musk have joined the boasting ranks. 
U.S. tech companies announce flashy features and powerful specs at product launches, yet true implementation and first productivity gains often come from Chinese companies. China's energy planning highly integrates its industrial, technological, population scale, infrastructure status, geography, and geopolitical environment for long-term vision. For example, China's solar and wind power technologies have created massive economic benefits in regions like Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia. Guizhou and Tibet mainly develop hydropower. Coastal areas develop nuclear power. Due to abundant thorium reserves, China leads in various nuclear technologies by prioritizing safe thorium-based molten salt reactors. In the foreseeable future, China will maintain electricity advantages over the U.S., with even greater scale and cost edges over other nations. Electricity alone gives China a strong position in AI competition. Not to mention China's vast population, market scale, largest R&D talent and engineer base, most complete supply chains, and best infrastructure. If the U.S. cannot invest trillions of dollars over the next decade to update infrastructure, its AI prospects will be very dim. In fact, the San Francisco outage cause is simple. Tech giants occupy too much dedicated electricity. They need stable supplies for safety redundancy. Since their payments far exceed ordinary users, utilities often prioritize their stability. Fires in aging equipment under unstable voltage are almost inevitable. Anyone with basic electricity knowledge knows this. However, the U.S. government is heavily in debt. The national system means government cannot seize land massively for infrastructure upgrades. U.S. companies have lost large-scale construction ability. Actually, the U.S. government might consider cooperating with China, letting China export its massive infrastructure capacity to the U.S. Chinese companies expand profits, while Americans gain brand new infrastructure. A win-win.